I'm not saying I have an unhealthy obsession with scissors, but there's a lot of pieces here. So, whilst I'm super gluing these things together, let's uh, talk a little bit about it. These are the scissor blades from Kill a Kill. You don't have to know too much about it other than it was an anime released in 2013, 2014 by Trigger. It's about a bunch of girls fighting over clothing and eventually space aliens. You know, normal stuff. What's actually more important is the model itself is over on CG Trader. It's made by Leviathan. And even more importantly than that, they're like three and a half feet long, which given my spray booth is about three feet wide in both directions, uh, this is gonna be great. Post hilt completion, we have the blade pieces. Now they are rather thin and I'm very afraid that even just a little bit of super glue and whatnot, they're just gonna snap in half at any kind of pressure. So what I can do is use a product called Milliput as well as a deburring tool and chamfer the edges and then fill it in with that Milliput. Which, as long as you smooth it out appropriately, you won't have to sand it too much and then it gives it that nice surface area to at least provide some shock prevention. Now again, this, this blade is still pretty small and in fact I did break it once more, so just be careful. Since this guy was already broken, I needed a more instantaneous solution, so I said, ah, baking soda and super glue creates a solution that goes like that. Which, it does work, but uh, you do gotta be really careful with this. I was finding it was getting very hot because it's an exothermic reaction. And actually, if I got any on my finger, it burned real bad. It also has a habit of creating these little mounds anywhere you pour some of the baking soda on it. So you do have to be a little bit careful not to make really weird structures on your thing. It's not flattenable. Flattenable? Flattening? Flatten? Flatten. It don't flatten good. Either way, it's a means of attaching things quickly without having to wait for something to dry or whatnot. So let's get to filling in those layer lines, grabbing some baking soda. What we can do is mix that into some polycrylic, my favorite of course, and this time in the flat gloss. And what that does is actually creates a really weird mixture. So at about 10 to 20% of the baking soda, and maybe some water here and there, you end up with a solution that when it dries, it dries hard enough that it's very easy to sand, it does make a lot of dust, but it's not sanding where it's like binding directly to the sandpaper, so it's easy to remove and it doesn't cause too many issues. Now of course I didn't record any of that because I don't like sanding, so you're just going to have to imagine it. So after imagining me sanding this thing, actually both blades, you know, multiple times, multiple layers, a lot more layers, a lot more sanding, maybe almost a sheet of sandpaper, but you know, it, it, it took some time. We can take some Vallejo Mecca Black Primer and just give everything a nice even black coat. So we do that to both sides, or both halves, if you will. So that's Ryuko's blade and then Neo Harame's blade. But I really haven't talked much about color. Going based on the anime, Ryuko's blade, the one closer to you, that one is red and then Neo's blade is purple. But just a regular purple and red, ah, that's boring. Let's actually do some candy. If you've never done a candy before, usually you're gonna start with like a dark color or a black to help bring out the silver. And then the next color is silver. Hey, look at that. Now that silver, of course, isn't a color necessarily. So what we do is once we give everything a nice flat coat of everything, get that shine, you know, gets all those texture and characters popping. Then we can take some dye, add it into some gloss varnish and use that to create our color as well as add some depth to it. So depending on the level of dye that we do and how much clear that we do affects the translucentness of that gloss and just kind of adds to the whole effect of, oh, okay, add various angles, it'll change the color or be darker, brighter, whatnot. So once we load that up into our spray gun and give the whole thing several to many passes, we can start seeing the color show. But this is also a really good time to talk about some of the downsides or at least why doing a candy is a lot harder to do. So in a candy, you're using a gloss, which means any and all imperfections are just going to be right front and center. 
they're going to show their face and you can't really say, eh, I can hide it with something. It, it, it is or it isn't. As well as because of the dye, depending on if we spray too much, if we spray too little, if we add too much dye, make the ratio wrong. All of that can change the color between like a little bit lighter here and there, a little bit darker here and there. It really does make this a high skill technique. My skill aside, if we take a look at the blade here, as I'm moving it around, we can see just from the gloss, there's still some areas that need a little bit of like sanding or smoothing out. It's still a little bit textured, but also we can see how this candy works. And that's the, hey, it gets brighter as it's more in your face and the light catches it. But then as it turns, you get all these darker spots. It's a really cool effect. I mean, who hates it? It's candy. In case you wanted to see me spraying it again, uh, here we go. Here's one more. And oh, here's it again, but different. Look at that. How did I do that? And oh man, even one more time. This time with the uh, silver looking a little bit weird. What's going on with that? Remember way back when, when I said, hey, this is a high skill ceiling kind of operation. And also that, you know, these blades are a little bit fragile. And I ended up uh, dropping Ryuko's blade on the carpet. Not a big fall, maybe two feet or so. And it was still enough to break the blade in half. Of course, if that was the only issue, it wouldn't be too, too bad, except, um, the first layer actually didn't adhere too well to the plastic to begin with, so it ended up peeling. Which as an overall just really put a damper on this whole project. Like it was like, fun and exciting and then by this time I was like, oh come on, anything else? So I finally just said, you know what, I've got some metallic red, I'm just gonna do that and then we'll clear over it and call it a day. And that metallic red was close enough, it kind of was more, um, pinkish than I like but you know what whatever even weirder was it actually solidified in the bottle and I had to pull it out and try and mash it up and mix it and this project's been kind of a pain now either way the not so smooth sword blade it uh, it was fully covered and I gave it a quick gloss over and just said all right whatever happens happens but before we just, you know, go off on a tangent and be a little dark and depressing, I don't really want that. Let's kind of finish it here, call it a day, and kind of go over what we learned. Probably the biggest thing that I learned is a three and a half foot sword in a three foot space just does not make it a good experience. Um, I was able to get some good paint down and it did look good for a while, but I was constantly running into issues of, oh, I'm hitting something. Oh, it's out of the way. Or, oh, how do I film this thing? And it'd totally be nice if I could just, you know, actually get good spraying techniques in the space rather than having to hold it and hold it steady and try and paint and have too many arms moving. It was fun, but weird. Like I can remember a couple of times where I'm trying to paint towards the tip and it's just like my hand's shaking a little bit, or at least not shaking, but just, you know, not holding it steady. And so I'm spraying into the void because, oh, it moved as I'm doing it. It's like, come on, guy. Either way, I am calling it here. This is going to be the end. Um, as for the other blade, uh, it's in the trash. It did not turn out well at all. Um, I'll probably revisit these two things and make it much better, much nicer. But at least for now, this is where I'm going to end it. So thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Don't